Gus and Grandpa and the Christmas Cookies Christmas was coming. Gus and Grandpa were baking cookies at Grandpa's house. Gus watched as Grandpa rolled out the cookie dough with a heaven wooden rolling pin. The dough stuck to the counter. Hey, Grandpa said to the dough, stop that sticking. Gus sprinkled more flour on the counter. Grandpa sprinkled more flour on the rolling pin. Outside the window, the snow was falling like flour sifted from the sky. The dough stuck again. No more sticking, Gus shouted. It was fun yelling at the cookie dough. Grandpa cut out stars and Christmas trees and reindeer. Gus ate the scraps of leftover dough. Grandpa cut out bells and Santas and candy canes. Gus ate more scraps of dough. Gus's mother and father never gave Gus raw dough to eat, but Grandpa liked eating dough too. So did Grandpa's dog, Skipper. Grandpa's oven was old, just like Grandpa. He had to light it with a wooden match. Grandpa put the first trays of cookies in the oven. Gus set the timer for 10 minutes. Then he and Grandpa waited for the scent of fresh baked cookies to fill the air in Grandpa's house with the smell of Christmas. Oh no, Grandpa said when it was time to frost the cookies. I forgot to buy the sprinkles. We can't have Christmas cookies without sprinkles. Gus and Grandpa drove to the store. Outside the store, a man dressed as Santa Claus stood next to a red kettle. He was ringing a bell. Some people stopped and dropped money into the red kettle. Good bless you, the man said to them. Gus was surprised. None of the people had sneezed. But then he understood. The man was saying a prayer to thank the people. Inside the store, Gus and Grandpa bought sprinkles and colored sugar and tiny red and green candy stars. When they left the store, the man with the red kettle was still ringing his bell. Gus tagged on Grandpa's sleeve. Why are people putting money in there, Gus asked Grandpa. The man will give the money in the kettle to children who don't have enough food to eat or warm clothes to wear or toys for Christmas, Grandpa said. Gus reached into his pocket. Grandpa had given him two shiny new quarters left over from the shopping. May I give the man my quarters, Gus asked. Grandpa nodded. Then Gus felt shy. He didn't know if two quarters was the right amount to put in the kettle. A woman wearing a blue coat put a dollar in the kettle. God bless you, the man told her. He kept on ringing his bell. Would the man say God bless you to Gus, too? Go on, Grandpa said. He gave Gus a gentle nudge. Gus walked forward. He dropped his quarters into the kettle one by one. God bless you, the man told him. Gus ran back to Grandpa. He took Grandpa's hand. He hoped his quarters would buy other children some Christmas cookies with sprinkles and colored sugar and tiny red and green candy stars on top. Too many cookies. Back home again, Gus and Grandpa frosted the cookies with red and green and white frosting. They put the decorations all over them. It took a long time. Finally, the cookies were done. Gus had never seen such beautiful cookies. Then the doorbell rang. Gus went with Grandpa to answer it. It was Mrs. Wren, who lived next door in the blue house. I brought you a couple dozen cookies, Mrs. Wren said. I thought a man alone would like some home baking. Grandpa thanked Mrs. Wren. He did not tell her that he already had six dozen cookies spread out on the kitchen table. Ten minutes later, the doorbell rang again. It was Mrs. Perry, who lived next door in the brown house. I've been baking Christmas cookies, Mrs. Perry said. I baked an extra two dozen just for you. Grandpa thanked Mrs. Perry. He did not tell her that he already had six dozen cookies on his kitchen table, plus two dozen cookies from Mrs. Wren. Gus and Grandpa were just sitting down to sample their cookies when the doorbell rang a third time. It was Mrs. Tucker who lived behind Grandpa in the gray house. It's cookie time, Mrs. Tucker said. You have to have some home-baked cookies at Christmas. Grandpa thanked Mrs. Tucker for her two dozen cookies. He did not tell her that he already had six dozen cookies on his kitchen table, plus two dozen cookies from Mrs. Wren and two dozen cookies from Mrs. Perry. After Mrs. Tucker left, Gus and Grandpa looked at each other. I guess those good ladies don't figure that a man can bake, Grandpa said. What are we going to do with all these cookies, Gus? How many dozen cookies can one man and one boy eat? What could they do with 12 dozen cookies? Gus tried to think they could give some to Gus's parents, but Gus's mother liked to bake her own cookies. They could feed some cookies to Skipper. Skipper liked cookies, but he liked bones a lot more. Gus thought and thought. Suddenly he had an idea. Do you think the man with the red kettle would give our cookies to the same children who are getting my quarters? Let's go find out, Grandpa said. 
Gus helped Grandpa put the cookies they had made in a big pile in a cardboard box. Then Gus and Grandpa drove back to the store. It was growing dark, but the man with the red kettle was still outside ringing his bell. Could you use six dozen fresh baked homemade Christmas cookies? Grandpa asked him. I sure could, the man said. I will take them down to the Christmas party at the homeless shelter tonight. Gus and Grandpa brought the big box of cookies from the car. Here they are, Gus said to the man. God bless you, the man said to Gus and Grandpa. Gus felt warm inside, even though it was still snowing. Then Gus and Grandpa drove home together, past twinkling Christmas lights, shining brightly through the falling snow.